Hey, what's up guys? This is Avery, and today I'm coming back with y'all with another video. And this video is going to be a short tutorial on the basic uses of SQLite. And we're going to be using SQLite 3 to be specific. But right before we get into how to download it, how to use it, and how to run some of its features, we're going to talk about this year's goal. So like I mentioned previously in the last video, our goal in this channel by the end of the year is to reach 300 subscribers. So um, thank you guys already for the few people that have subscribed since the last time we talked about this. But now we're just missing another 32 people. So if you guys are new here and you're going to like the video, go ahead and like it. But especially subscribe because it really help us out a lot. And if you've been subscribed for a while, go ahead and share with your friends. I make a lot of videos on random programming tutorials and also our game tutorials. And yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and jump in. So in the SQLite... On this page, the home page, I'll have the link in the description. I would add it into a card, but I tried doing that in a previous video, and it turns out YouTube doesn't let small YouTubers add links into their cards. They can only share other videos. So you have to have a certain amount of stuff, a certain amount of subscribers and whatnot to be able to add the link. So yeah, the link for these things I'm going to share are going to be in the description. But here's a SQLite page. You can go ahead and download. And if you're a Windows user, you can find Windows. And you can go ahead and take this zip, this archive, and you can drop it into your, I believe, your system 32. And Mac, there is a download on here as well. It's just like that one. But I looked it up, and actually, all Mac OS, they come pre-installed to SQLite. They come pre-installed to the, the newest version. And Linux, to go on there, you're just going to have to do it with the repository. It's the easiest way. So I'll just be SQLite 3. And yeah, I've got that installed, but it's pretty fast. And also, to show you some quick examples of SQLite, I've, today I'm just going to show you some basics, but you can use it with other programming languages, which gives you basically unlimited amount of possibilities to make databases, to pull things from them, to save things in them. And it's pretty great. So one example is this website that I made for clothing. Go ahead and click on the woman. It'll only show the woman's clothing. You can go ahead and click on the men, and now it's just showing the men clothing. There's some clothing that is for a woman and men. But basically, that's how it works. It has a database full of all these items of clothing. It has description, their shipping, their price, and their sizes, and their pictures. And the database, you can be able to sort through it by their types. And that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing it at the smallest level as possible. You can use for other things as well. I have it in here as an, an email sign up. You can go ahead and add your email, and it's just added to a list on the server. All right, so here you can see how many people have been signed up to it. But yeah. So now, now we're gonna jump right into the code. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the SQLite prompt, and first thing you can see, the prompt opens. It gives you recommended to type in dot help it can give you more features dot open to open a previous one you can type in the name of the database up here and open as well so we can just type in open we'll just call it test onedb and now that we're in this database we can go ahead and make a table so the database can have several tables within it but this table we're going to be making is going to be a table that's going to store people's information so we'll call it people and then we're going to set the, the column names so the first column can be an id and this ID will be an integer. So you can say you're the first, you're the sixth, you're the 20th person on the list. And make it so we don't need to automatically, make it so we don't need to put that manually every single time. Just do primary key and automatically fill out. It's first, second, third, and therefore it's going to do it on its own. Say the first name of the person, set that variable to a text. The last name, set that to a text as well. And then go ahead and say the age. And... Oh, sorry about that. And the gender. Now our tables are made. So the first thing we want to do with our table is add some rows into it, add some people. So we just do insert into and then name of the table. And I think you guys would notice these have been capitalized, these have been lowercase. But as far as you can tell, it's not actually important. It usually shouldn't matter. But it's kind of just a norm that people have when they're using SQL. So just for the tutorial, I'm going to be doing that. So we're going to want to say the names of our columns. So like I said, ID, it's going to fill out on its own. So we're not filling that column up. Do last name, 
age and gender. Now we can set the values. New first name, last name, age, and gender. Let me go ahead and fill this out a few more times. And just got to change all these things. And as well, you don't actually need to fill out all the values. Like I mentioned, you don't need ID. You can take out any of them that you want. So right now I'm just taking out gender. It's the very last one, but it's not the actual one that's required. So it doesn't need the last one like I mentioned. So we can go ahead and get rid of the last name. Get rid of it here as well. And so now that we've added all these people into the list, into the table, we're going to go ahead and check them. And as it should be with the integer primary key, Avery should be 1, Rick should be 2, and so forth. So to do that, you just do select all from people. And now it just prints it off. You can see the ID, the name, last name, the ones that are blank or left blank. And that's basically it. But like one of the examples I showed at the very beginning, it's the website. It's not just going to be this list forever. Maybe you only want the man, maybe you only want the woman, maybe you want a certain age. So we're going to be able to parse through that and display it the way we want it to. So one way to do that is order by. And say we want the age to be youngest to oldest. Do ascending. And now it's the youngest people to the oldest people. Do descending as well. Now it's going to be descending. And you go ahead and go to that. You can set it to random. And it's going to give you random people, a random order every single time. Now, a different way we can do it, instead of order by, we can do where. So with a where function, we can do something like where ID or where age equals 22. No, age is equals 22 right there. Age 22 right there. So yeah, right there's three people with that exact same age. So that's what we're wanting. And we can also do where age is between 20 and 27. So now it's just going to be the people that are between those two ages. And say we don't actually want all this information, we can go ahead and get rid of the asterisk. Just set that to first name and age. And go ahead and list all the ones you want. And before we continue, we can click save. You can do test. What was the name of the test? Test one that BB. And then now it's save. Let's go ahead and exit. Not exit. I'll clear the screen to make it easier for you guys. Two by three. Test one. And just make sure it's all there. Select from people. Yeah, it's all there. So now we can go ahead. We can actually combine these. You can do select all from people where age between. 20 and 28 and you can do order by so we can do order by random so it's going to do both of them it's going to select everyone from these age and then it's going to order them randomly we can go ahead and do age ascending it's going to be the youngest the oldest within that age group and say we just want all the men so you can go ahead and type in gender equals that that gives you the men. Gender equals woman. That gives you the woman. And the people that weren't filled out, that one example, that's not going to pop up. And say we accidentally put in someone that we didn't want. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and remove Tommy. To do that, we can go ahead. And we can check for any of them. We can say we want to remove ID six. We can say we want to remove anyone with the name Tommy. So we're just going to go ahead and do delete from. It's going to be people where. ID equals six. Now let's just check that again. And number six isn't there anymore. But basically guys, these are all the sample commands. We can go ahead and you can create a table. You can insert rows into it. You can 
select from it. You can use where to query through it. You can use order by to have the order set up and you can go and delete the things you don't actually want. But just remember once again, you just do save um, as the name of the database. And every once in a while, maybe it'll tell you that you don't have permission or something. And usually if I just get rid of the comma, the semicolon, it'll say, like this time it says database is locked. But sometimes I've had it where I have the semicolon, it'll say database is locked, and then you get rid of it and it'll work. But that's basically how it is. And like I mentioned before, the show at the very top, you type in dot help and give you a list of a bunch of commands. So that's basically how this works. And we exit out of here. And I'm going to show you this one last thing. It's this program called SQLite Browser. And it's basically just a, a GUI for everything we just did. It's not as great. It has a few bugs. But I'll show you an example. I'm just going ahead and open it up. We'll just do test1.db. And it's going to have people. It's going to have all these. Go through browse data. You can create new tables. You can edit tables. You can change things from the browse data. Let's show you this. As we can see, we just removed that number six, so it's not there. We could just go ahead and set that to W as well. And you can make a new record. It's going to be a new row. You go ahead and check through the other tables. Make new tables here. But yeah, that's basically it. You can open it, make new ones, save them, revert changes. Yeah, this is it's pretty useful to use this. It's yeah, it's pretty useful. But this is if you want to jump right into the database and start changing things. But with this coding right here that I showed you, it's not going to be completely used always. You're not going to always jump into the SQLite prompt, but you're going to need to know this to use it within other codes. If you're going to make a, an app in Java that needs a database, you're going to need to know this stuff. You're making something with C++, Python, anything, even a website in PHP. And if you guys want a tutorial on one of those, if you want one in Java, C++, Python, PHP, go ahead and leave the comment in the description and I'll try to work on one of those as fast as possible. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe. It'll help out a lot. Our channel goal this month, or by the end of this month, by the end of this year, is to reach 300 subscribers. So we just need another 32. So if you guys are one of the new 32 people, feel free to join. I would love to have you guys with us. And don't forget to hit the like once again. And thank you guys so much and see you guys next time.